Hello, today we're focusing in on linear functions. So yesterday we talked about functions in general. And a linear function has something more specific. It has a constant rate of change. So for every amount that x changes, y changes in a constant amount. And it can always be represented by a linear, let's see, it can be represented by a linear function. A little bit redundant right there. Okay, in two variables, y equals mx plus b. So we've got this standard, actually it's not standard form, it's called slope intercept form, but it's a very normal thing that you see a lot when you talk about linear functions. Okay, and you'll see you, it's pretty much set up so that you put in an input and then you get your output. And to recognize this in a chart, you need to have like you said up here, you have to have a constant rate of change, which might go like, uh, what? What are you talking about? So a constant rate of change means that when you subtract the numbers on top and they're equal, then when you subtract the numbers on the bottom, you also get an equal number each time. So for instance, 6 minus 3 is 3, 9 minus 6 is 3, 12 minus 9 is 3. So you can see that's a constant amount that we're adding each time. And then let's check down here. So it looks like this time we're subtracting 6, because 36 minus 6 is 30. And you can always just take the number on the right and subtract the number on the left. So 30 minus 36 equals negative 6. And let's check that for the next one. So 24 minus 30 is also negative 6. 18 minus 24 is also negative 6. So we've got this constant rate of change. We have this constant amount that's changing. Okay, next one, let's see. 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. 7 minus 5 is also 2. Now, the tops are not always, in our examples, I think that they're going to be the same. But as you get further into this later on, sometimes the reason we talk about rate of change is that sometimes you'll have to compare the... Basically, you might have to reduce a fraction, but we'll talk more about that as we get deeper into this subject. Okay, so two, 9 minus 2 is 7. 20 minus 9 is 11. 35 minus 20 is 15. So this one is not a constant rate of change. So that one is not going to be a linear function. It still might be a function, it's just not a linear function. Okay, let's look at this. Add 1. Add 1, add 1, okay, so that's constant on top. And then three, 5 minus 3 is 2, so it's like we're adding 2. 7 minus 5 is 2, so we're adding 2. 7 plus 2 is 9. Alright, so this one is a linear function. Now let's check our next one. So we're adding 1, 2 plus 1 is 3 zoom in a little. 3 plus 1 is 4. So the top's constant. Let's see. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So this one's not a linear function. All right. Now these next ones look a little bit confusing. Another way to check if something's a linear function, if you're talking about an equation, is can it be written in the form y equals mx plus b? You might say, well, that doesn't look like that. However, it could be written that way if you think of it as 0 times x plus 3.8 is the same as that. So this one is a function. So let's go ahead and circle that. y equals square root of x. Now that's the same as saying y equals x to the 1 half. I don't know if you've gone over that before but we will go over that more later on in the unit. And that cannot be written. Anytime you have a power of x, it's not a linear function. So this one's not linear. Kind of the same thing with this. x is not just a regular variable. It's being used as an exponent. So that one is not a function. Now this one, it pretty much is set up exactly how we were saying y equals mx plus b has the same format, so that one is a function without even having to change anything. But this one, let's just kind of double check. Let's simplify it a little. 6 times x is 6x. 6 
6 times 1 is 6, and that looks like the right format, so that one is a function. Okay, 2 over x, this is going to be the same as 2 times x to the negative 1. Remember how I said that if you have a funny power, then it's not a function, it's not a linear function. Okay, once again, a power, no, that is not a function, a linear function. I keep saying the wrong thing. Okay, let's just kind of switch this around, see if it will work. So, you could put the y on this side and the 7x plus 5 on this side. Do you see how that looks like our correct format? And it is. It's a function. Linear function. Okay, y equals 3x. So you might say, well, it's missing the plus. You could add a 0, right? And it doesn't really change anything. So this one is also a function. Okay. Now these ones, you can tell pretty quick. A linear function looks like a line. So, yes, this is a function. Linear function. Um, no, it does not look like a straight line. Oh, definitely no. Now this was a straight line. That's a little bit of a trick. It's actually not a linear function. You might say, well, it sure looks like a line to me. However, remember the vertical line test? So if you were to put the vertical line right over this vertical line, technically it has a lot of points in common with that line, and so it technically has a whole bunch of solutions, and that means it's not a function, because if 5 was our input, it could have any output, a whole bunch of different outputs. Okay, now this line, however, is a function because can see that the vertical line test works and if for any input you have a you have y as its you have 3 as its output in this case but it is at least one distinct output for every input so this one's yes this one is no it is not a straight line you can tell pretty much just from looking at it all right so on the pod we're actually going to focus on these so you're going to be finding the differences, and if you have a common difference on top and a common difference on the bottom, then you're good, and it's a linear function. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.